my going in a car which has a 200 miles drive. I want to invent a car which must go by 400 miles. And where is the road and where is the traffic congestion, how it is to be avoided, all of these things are not there. Just a mere blind sophistication and blind enrichment it is there in science. I want to say three impossibilities in the society, especially with science. One, you cannot do these things. That is, at the utmost difficulty you have to achieve these things. Number one, if somebody is grown, you cannot control. If somebody has relished discretion and independence, they cannot be brought back to control unless you have spiritual tools. And number two, if you give power in somebody's hand, they cannot be reformed at any time at all. After gaining power, for example, you have invented nuclear energy. Now you are doing a lot of things to reform this. How it is possible? With power, nobody will be obedient to any reforms. And uh, the third thing is, whenever you stabilize, popularize and addict the society with your product, you cannot prohibit or you cannot restrict it. Now they are saying that computer is fool's gold, so you prohibit or keep it distance or use it in a restricted sense. Mobile phones don't use, if you put it in the ear, it is dangerous to your nervous system. If you put it in the pocket, it is dangerous to your cardiac system. If you put here, it is against your, uh, that is, uh, digestive system and reproductive system, then where you have to keep? Then I told him on seminar that it must be kept in the bag switched off. That's what they want to say that. So, if you create a mania in the society, if you make a crazy drive, you cannot control. So, three impossibilities. One, make a crazy drive, you cannot restrict or prohibit. If somebody is grown and they have tasted independence and liberty, they cannot be touched by impressionability. And third thing, if somebody is given power, reforms, they are impossible. Unless you have radiant, blazing, resplendent spiritual tools, which are outspringing from your yeah, fluorescence, which is by your innate skill, you have to do that. So these are the things in science. Now we are coming to environment. <coughs> environment, we have designed a lot of things by which whenever you do something, especially the rule of the land, you know that the rule of the land, that is penology, criminology, victimology and penology. In the base of penology, they will give penalty. Three things are there. One is fine, second is imprisonment and third is execution. The three things have been given by the eco-penology or the cosmo-penology because of our mis- Habitual behavior with the nature. Number one, whatever we have received, whatever we have received by industrialization, we have supplied more than 400 billion tons of carbon to the atmosphere. The available resources, if they are also burnt or exhausted, there is a possibility of 30 degrees of rise in temperature in the globe, which may result in melting of Arctic ice, which may bring down equal temperature of Cairo to London, which may also make London like cities to end up in water. So industrialization, whatever you have earned, with the penalty, now you are uh, investing it for global warming research and activities. And uh, discarding your personal health and relations, not even talking with your wife and children, you have earned that money. All that money is invested in drug analysis and diagnostic skills. Whatever you have made unlawful enrichment, Without considering these people of the society, that's what I used to say, that Shastra say there are two things. One is weakness of the strong and strength of the weak. The weak people, when they cry for bread, they cry for education, they cry for infrastructure, it cannot directly come and attack any uh, great um, missionaries or any great uh, personalities or any great uh, minister-like person. So, it will not directly attack any administrative forces or plutocratic forces. But the cry, the craving, the wrath and pain that will take the form of dharma which will punish all of these people that's what this IT, real estate, whatever the pseudo wealth status they have made having a marginal deviation from the real wealth status it has been punished by recession everybody is suffering by that so this wealth status, recession is punishment industrialization, global warming is a punishment relation and health mismanagement lot of other new coming diseases if you make a competition between drugs and diseases disease will run and win the race also because if you invent two medicines there will be 20 new diseases that is the status of modern society so this is environment finally coming to media 24 hours there are hundreds of channels that means that there are people seeing that without which they won't be doing that i was astonished to see that this number of channels somebody may be in the world seeing the bhagavan is known as animisha Bhagavan is known as Anivisha, who is watching for 24 hours, but he is watching all of us. And that is different. So this is the media. Media is a very powerful potential tool. And media is said to be one of the primogenitors of cultural disaster. It has brought a real cultural disaster. And whatever they are saying is that it is known as 
mutual excuse game. What is the game known as? Mutual excuse. If you see that C and C people are the viewers, they say that they are going, that's why we are seeing. And if you are asking that the showing people relay, they are saying they are not seeing that's why we are going. That is it. Like CSA game, it is a C4 game. They are playing like that. So we must take some sort of strong protest. For example, if there is a cinema, if everybody goes and sees the cinema, then it becomes a box hit. If nobody sees and everybody neglects, that becomes a boxer hit to the producer. Likewise, people they should take strong protest and they should decide, they should start avoiding these channels and writing letters and uh, doing ethical protest against these things. So, in order to bring awareness and also to honor only few comfortable personalities available striving for the development of these six faculties, the science, spirituality, social service, education, environment and media, we have started this from this year with the help of lot of unanimous supporting personalities that is available here. I want to say two exercises which we have to start now. One is prayer for universal peace. Somebody asked me, I am in pure. Already I am pieces. How I can pray for universal peace? Then I know that that is entirely different. There was one person who was not having uh, a video recorder. And that is just a music program. Music program is voice oriented. Then there is no need for video shooting at all. So, whenever a person is paying for his benefit, that prayer comes from his peripheral surface. Whenever a person prays for the universal welfare, that comes from the abysmal surface of the core of his soul. And whenever a person is suffering or peaceless, that is a peripheral avarana or achadana, which is a peripheral clothing which will not hinder the person's broad and nature. Then Sita was totally blinded by Ravana and Ashokavana. When she was suffering that, then Hanuman was uh, just subjected to fire by Ravana. Then she prayed Sita Bhava Hanumataha. Because she explained that, that to protect ourselves, we don't have anything because that is God's duty, we are surrendered to Him. But something happening before us, it is our duty to protect. So I pray for Ravana. That is Ravana's uh, atrocity which may harm this uh, Hanuman who is a messenger and an obedient servant of Ravana. So, whenever you pray for universal peace, number one, you are purely eligible, certainly it will fructify you, and by making this universal prayer, you are purified and qualified for personal peace. It may be a reverse osmosis, but certainly you must pray for universal peace. And number two, distant prayer, distant radiation and communication. We have to pray for the distant people, those who are not here, we have to govern them only by our prayers. There are a lot of people, lot of terrorists are there, lot of good people are there. So by our prayer, we have to energize. Daily you have to pray without naming any person. Let all the people working for the society, let them be energized by the prayer. And we have the duty of energizing the weak people, or the people who are very much altruistic in nature, as well as to be, we have to weaken the many dynamistic persons of the society. These people are very dynamic persons. Those people are many dynamic in nature. So such people, they must be weakened. We can execute two forces. Number one, we can either rectify their mind, mind setup and make them reformed. If not possible, the same energy goes to the counter forces. For example, if you are praying for the terrorists, number one, if you are so powerful, then that prayer goes to the terrorists. If there is a possibility that will mitigate the vigor or that will mitigate the atrocity standard in their minds. If it is not possible, that will go inside and capacitate the persons who are in the counter-terrorism activities. So it will do some benefit. So you try to pray for the weaker section to be energized and try to pray for those who are very strong but those who are very harmful to the society. This prayer we have to make daily and that is very much essential. For these two things we have to start from today. We have to pray for universal pace just for two minutes and we have to think that God should shower his munificence, his benevolence upon all weaker altruistic forces for means of hypercapacitation and also <coughs> decapacitating the evil forces wherever there is a possibility of rectification or total extirpation, anything he can govern. So for universal peace we have to wholeheartedly pray. For this is known as Sarvartha Sankshema. For world peace, for balancing or energizing the weaker sections are weakening the many dynamic members of the society, harming the peace and harmony. This is known as Sarvartha Sankshema. That is the form of uh, scientists aiming for peace and harmony. That is a real institute uh, of study of advanced studies. And that is the India International Multiversity. And that is a real heritage academy. And that is a real commonwealth. And knowing this is a real science and practicing it, the 
real technology. And now 